the scientific research on the various tribes of gnomes or dwarves in the regions of Siberia and Central Asia started at the time when geologists were sent out to spot the copper deposits in the region. It turned out that all the places with the copper ore have been already explored, already mined by somebody. They were all opened. But by whom? Historically, there shouldn't have been anybody mining here anything at all in these cold regions. So, a number of uh, geological expeditions were organized in the region, which did an extensive study. These were not small expeditions, and some of them lasted even uh, years. Their members were professors and the most respected geologists of the country at that time. As the expeditions arrived on the spot, actually there was no mystery. The local people knew very well the folks, the miners who were doing all this work, and their settlements were still there, not at all difficult to find. They were all over the area. These were the dwarves, locally called the tribe Chut. Although the Chut live in underground tunnels, up until the 17th and even 18th century, they maintained regular connections with us, the big brothers. A messenger from both sides would deliver messages when needed. They were not in hiding at that time. And it was only in 18th century when these uh, regular diplomatic connections were actually severed. Before that, they would trade copper items actually with the big brothers and exchange them for other stuff that they like from us. So actually at the time of the very first expeditions there were still living witnesses of the times when the dwarves and humans coexisted peacefully and had a regular connection. These were some of the actual artifacts found by those expeditions at their settlements. Settlements of the dwarves could be spotted up until the 20s or 30s of the last century, so not so long ago, just some hundred years ago. But in general, they preferred to stay in the tunnels in the dark because their eyes were not adapted to broad daylight, and if there was too much sun, the locals say their eyes would kind of even burst out. And that is why the chut would be seen in the open only at night or on very cloudy days. Alexander Kultepin was greatly impressed by his visit to a site underground settlement of uh, dwarves in Central Asia. Now, officially, there are some very cute silver spears found there as well. So officially these are tunnels made by children because obviously a creature of our size can't get through so they blamed it all on the children. I mean just by hearing these two-year-olds, they are famous for making tunnels in solid rock, don't they? An extensive network of them. And then what better toy would you have for your child than a sharp spear, right? So when visiting the site, he just looking at the overall situation, he thought it's absolutely laughable that two or three year olds would construct a network of underground tunnels and then their parents would arm them with uh, sharp weapons and send them underground. So 
so as we said uh, some hundred years ago the race decided to withdraw from on land habitation and currently they reside only in the deeper portions of the tunnels also according to the locals in the area their numbers are much smaller nowadays there are encounters now and then but those are just the isolated cases instead of the regular relationships like before there are still some entrances from the land to their dwellings of course they are too small for us to follow but they look like uh, some sort of natural cavity maybe a hollow tree or something of that that sort actually Alexander Kaltepin was uh, fortunate to get access to this super fascinating information about these expeditions during his first year of study in the geological institute in Moscow although the information was not included in the official curriculum what is to be taught still the actual records of the expeditions were there and were still accessible at that time and it's not just the Chut tribe there are a couple of different races within the dwarfs themselves other type is called Sirtia also from the Siberian regions and there are other dwarfs also in Scandinavia and all the way to Ireland actually but nowadays as the fabricated history is getting polished to sparkle and look like perfect gradually all these names that in the past were very well known to signify the races of dwarfs or the tribes of the dwarf race to be more exact nowadays they're meaning in the scientific works has been turned into something else if you ask a modern historian he will be convinced that these are tribes of some sort of primitive people of our size that were ancestors of some other tribes and so on and so on but this is the meaning that has been attached to these names very very recently in the past to historians and everybody else this meant dwarf tribes and as we saw in the previous videos on Oral, the dwarves are not the only magical race that lived and probably still lives in these inhospitable cold regions in the underworlds of these now inhospitable regions. In the past they were of warm and pleasant climate. Just short couple of hundred years ago the settlements of these other races were studied by the historians of that time. And only very recently they were simply declared as mythology or in other words fantasy but when enthusiasts open the old books and find the locations of those settlements and visit them nowadays what they find are earthworks and also what i have been calling collectively old earth ruins so it doesn't look like fantasy at all but as absolutely tangible beings that live there